five on how to be friends with food. So during my teens and 20s, I struggle from life-threatening eating disorders and I've been free for 15 years now. And this video, I just want to say it's not about eating disorders as it's about the funky relationships both men and women have with food and just some tips on how to overcome that. That being said, here are a few red flags to consider. Do you think about food a lot, what you're going to eat and not going to eat? No! 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 Do you have feelings of guilt or shame after you eat? Like you failed for treating yourself or eating more than you probably should have? Do you skip a meal or restrict before eating out? Or make up for the dessert you had by getting on the treadmill and losing the calories that you gained that day? Do you have all or nothing thinking? What's good or bad and what's permissible or not permissible? And do you have those thoughts that where you think if I eat good, I am good, or if I eat bad, then I'm bad or I'm a failure? If you have a set number on the scale that you just can't go above, all I can say to you is unless the scale says beautiful, so that being said, here are five tips on how to be better friends with food. So one is stop restricting. Food is not your enemy. It's whatever dialogue is going on in your brain, the stinking thinking. So the more you restrict, the more chances you have of binging, the more chances you have of overeating later, and then the guilt comes, and then you follow that with skipping a meal the next day or over-exercising. It's like a vicious cycle. You restrict, you binge, you feel guilty, and then it's payback time. Tip number two is food is meant to be enjoyed, not calculated or dissected. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be a positive experience. And so if it causes you stress, anxiety, then that leads us to our tip number three. So perhaps you need to examine your relationship with food. Pay attention to the dialogue going on in your head. Perhaps you're not constantly preoccupied or obsessing over it, but you have quite a bit of calculating and withholding and playing those little games that are so unnecessary and can become really toxic and habitual. So you need to realize that you're allowed to eat. Newsflash. <laughs> it's okay to eat and it's actually mandatory for your human survival. So think of your body as a car, it actually needs fuel to run. Next time you hit the fridge, ask yourself, am I really hungry? Or is it a feeling of being lonely, bored, or anxious about something else? And why would you hurt yourself and deny your body of the fuel it needs? Number five is listen to your body. It knows what it needs and what it's lacking. So even if you ever have cravings for ice cream or chips, instead of eating the whole tub of ice cream or the whole bag of chips, just grab a bowl, a portion. And that way you can enjoy and feel a sense of satisfaction, but not have the guilt following. Enjoy and savor every bite. Portions are really important and it'll help prevent mindless, distracted eating. There's all types of crazy fasts, diet and fads out there. And all I can say is you don't need any of them to maintain a healthy weight. The more you do restrict, the more you want to keep restricting because what happens is like any other addiction the pathways in your brain it's like it gets ingrained and it becomes a habit that is really really difficult to stop well if i get to this weight or you have a set goal that you want to reach mm -hmm. for some people they can get there and stop but for others it doesn't and it can become a really dangerous life-threatening disorder which it is what happened to me Trust me, you don't want to mess with this. I wouldn't wish eating disorders on my worst enemy. That being said, I'd rather be a machine that's happy, well-nourished, and functioning at peak capacity than be cranky, irritable, can't think properly, and who's plagued with headaches, which is me when I'm hangry. <laughs> you don't have to deprive yourself of anything. So even if you struggle, not like majorly, but even just a little bit, get help. Find somebody to help you figure out why you're developing certain patterns because you don't want this to blow up into a full-blown disorder. If you want to find out more about my story and how I experienced victory over this, I encourage you to get my book, Dare to be Raw. It's on my website. Really good. <laughs>
Tumblr.com or Amazon. So that's all for today. Please share your comments and the thoughts that you have in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Bye! Bye.